Good. Thanks a lot, uh, Paco and Sergio, for this opportunity and for the introduction. Good. So I would like to start, as I usually talk, uh, start my public talks, which is how many legs does a fly have? Of course, it's an insect, so it has six legs. How many wings does a fly have? Here, usually audiences start splitting two or four. Of course, it's diptera, so they have two wings. This said, Drosophila genetics can bring the second fly a wing pair back. How many Drosophila researchers got the Nobel Prize? And this is normally where audiences hand wavingly guess none, one, two, and uh, they are then very uh, astonished when seeing or uh, learning that there are nine, arguably 10 Nobel laureates, uh, which won their prize for research in Drosophila, and that all these Nobel Prizes are in physiology or medicine, posing the question as to why. Now, there are many books that explain the fly phenomenon, but as Martin Brooks uh, quite rightly points out, the fly's public image remains as low as ever. We seem reluctant to accept that this tiny creature can teach us anything, let alone anything about ourselves. And I would add here, and this reluctance includes clinicians, non-fly scientists, politicians, fund-giving organizations, and so on. So can we improve uh, fly science communication or advocacy? Of course, there are political institutional frameworks, but for all of those that are engaging, you will know that it's not that trivial. And we are, posing, we are, we are facing some enormous challenges because unlike medicine or applied science, uh, fundamental research has no audiences with vested interests. So the only thing we can play at is curiosity. Now, to improve our, our approaches, uh, together with my colleague, Sam Ellingworth, uh, we published this uh, special issue in seminar, Cell Developmental Biology, on science communication in the field of fundamental biomedical research, which was quite successful with over 55,000 downloads in two years. And the point that we are putting forward there is the need for objective-driven long-term initiatives. And I would like to illustrate that now with the Manchester Fly Facility, which together with my colleague Sanjay Patel, uh, I launched in 2011. So we are objective-driven. Our objective is to raise awareness of the importance of fly research. Um, as an efficient and economically responsible pillar for discovery processes in the biomedical sciences. And we are using long-term strategies. And these are three-pronged, Joseph for research, Joseph for public, and Joseph for schools. And this is what I would like to explain in the following. So strategy one, Joseph for research, addresses fellow scientists, which can be our students, which can be newcomers, which can be colleagues working on mouse. Um, so the key strategy here is our training package for Drosophila genetics, uh, which has 41,000 downloads by now uh, across the world. And its key idea is to train new fly researchers comprehensively and in time-saving time ways because it is driven by self-study. In addition, and this is explained in this article here, also in G3, uh, you can use it to teach genetics as uni at, at university. It can be woven into courses, seminars. I, for example, during my practical course of three days, teach 60 undergraduates with this training. Uh, if we all would do this, we could reach thousands and thousands of students worldwide and prime them for Drosophila. The second strategy uh, prong, uh, of, our, uh, of our activities is addressing non-specialist audiences through Joseph for Public. First of all, our website is a one-stop shop for advocacy. So there you can find outreach resources of any kind that have been published anywhere. So please also link your resources out there, send them along, and they will be there under your name, of course. And be aware that our webpage is the link behind the public teachers and students button on Flybase. 
In addition, we are developing resources. So for example, we develop eight science fair activities, which can all be downloaded from this repository here and are being used in over 13 countries across six continents, as we know from emails and messages sent to us. But there are many other uh, resources that we have been building, including our educational movies, More Fly, Big Impact, two movies which have been translated into Spanish, Indonesian, Arabic and Portuguese is underway. And of course, also our little computer game, if you want to play that, fighting your fly stocks against mites and mold and disease. Well, I've taken the public outreach to another level also by co-organizing with Stuart Allen, uh, the Brain Box event in Manchester in 2016 with 5,400 visitors on one day where Drosophila featured in eight different themes. So in ways that, for example, a climbing essay of Drosophila was shown next to neurosurgeons showing how to cut open human skulls. And that this really worked uh, is, was shown in our survey where 12% highlighted the flies actually as an attraction. Finally, for this kind of uh, strategy, we also collate ideas for elevator pitches. So we develop simple, efficient, scientifically sound explanations. And these are available for you. And we also invite you to help us to improve them further. That this strategy really works was shown in 2017 after the last Nobel Prize when national newspapers were reporting about Drosophila and they used formulations from our web pages. So in this way, we could influence the quality of these articles in ways that were uh, scientifically correct and, and helped our case. The third strategy is to establish Drosophila in schools. And how this works is described in blogs, YouTube videos, and articles. Uh, but briefly, uh, what we try to do is not to talk about flies, but to teach the curriculum with flies. So the Drosophila is ideal for this because many of the research uh, topics are curriculum relevant and we can use them in entertaining and memorable ways by telling anecdotes and micro experiments from 100 years of Drosophila research. Uh, the implementation works in that we send university students as teaching assistants into schools, which then develop school adequate resources in true collaboration between teachers and scientists. Uh, the dissemination occurs through school visits, but also teacher seminars, as well as ready to use lessons and teacher support materials, which are available online. So they can be downloaded from this resource here and uh, are accessible through our Joseph for Schools webpage. And you can see that all our resources, uh, lesson resources we've developed so far have been translated into different languages and are being used in 15 countries across six continents. Just to give you some examples, this student here dissects wild type or mutant larvae and then does enzymatic stainings for ADH activity. Or well, here you see um, an animation from our five steps to an action potential where we explain in 10 minutes to year 10 students uh, an action potential. We can then ask for what happens if we take our potassium channels and they understand the consequences. Good, so as I said, we take these into schools and uh, teacher seminars to test our resources and to, to, um, to disseminate them. So we did 90 events so far. This is our flagship event, which I would briefly want to explain. So we went with eight people into a school where we saw 160 students from eight different schools and they all saw four curriculum relevant lessons in parallel. And uh, the, the logistics is shown here, but it's all also explained in this PLOS SciComm blog. That this really works is shown here. So when we ask, do you think that Drosophila is an attractive organism to be used in biology lessons, overwhelmingly positive, 
Do you think that simple model organisms are important tools for scientific discovery? Very positive. I believe that Drosophila can help to develop new treatments or diseases. Very positive. And this statement here, I never really thought that a fly could be useful, but I see the potential now is, of course, exactly what we want to achieve. Finally, in this uh, approach is that we also write articles in school journals where we explain our own research in simple terms. And as you can see, this article here is on our university repository and has 6,200 downloads, which is exceptional for a university repository. But overall, for us, it is really not about Manchester Fly Facility, but Manchester Fly Facility really wants to facilitate. And for us, it's about collaboration. So we have by now a number of sister initiatives, like in Latin America, Turkey, Croatia, Indonesia, and Nigeria. But we also collaborate with other organizations such as Trent in Africa, Jos Africa, or the Josofla Research and Training Center by Amos Abolaji in Ibadan in Nigeria. So what really my key take home message here is, is that we need to collaborate. So don't reinvent the wheel, but build on and enhance what's there already. I've given you many resources that are there already, use them. If you have improvements, send them back to us and we can improve our resources and share them again with the community. So sharing your ideas, resources, collaborating, don't just do your own thing, which then is a drop on the hot stone, but rather make it a waterfall. Good, so uh, there I would like to stop. So I would like to acknowledge Sanjay Patel, with whom all this was done and with whom it would not have been possible. Some funders, uh, this talk can also be seen on our webpage. Uh, and then all the resources I talked about are summarized here in addition to many other uh, science communication resources. Good, thank you very much. Thank you, Andreas, for a great talk. Whereas I, I can, I have one question. Do you recommend a specific approach for very young uh, kids or elder ones? I mean, when I give talks in schools and in high schools, the, the interaction is different. So I was wondering which approach would be better for each age? So first of all, um... I've written about this in blogs, so um, all these things you, you can read there in detail. So just go to this Gedanken experiment and there you'll see the links. Um, of course, I mean, that, that, that's, if you go into schools, what is very important is to recognize, don't just talk about the flies. And, and about, of course, they like that a scientist goes into schools uh, and to, to engage the students um, as a role model. But teachers become even more interested if you talk about stuff that they would have to teach anyway. So you support them in a way. Uh, and teachers find it then even more interesting. In primary schools, of course, you talk about different things than in secondary schools. In secondary schools, I can talk about, yeah, we, for example, take uh shibiri flies and and uh, and uh, let them paralyze under the armpit or we shake uh, we shake epileptic flies and then we start talking about action potentials and how it all works and, and neural networks this you can do a secondary school in primary school we do other things like for example in england primary schools have to teach life cycle so we talk about we bring schools we we, we pass uh, flies into schools leave them there for two weeks. They can see how the, uh, the eggs had, uh, uh, hatch and how, how the flies develop. Then you can talk about this development. Then you can use, for example, metamorphosis as an example where you can show how research in Drosophila is contributing to understand what's actually happening in a pupa. All these things are available. So one of our resources is on Drosophila for, for schools. Jan Janusz have a question. Amazing efforts, thanks a lot. Do you do any research in assessing the impact of your outreach? outreach? The always impact assessment is always a very, very critical thing. So um, if you go into schools and you expect you can do um, proper uh, impact analysis, forget it. Teachers are very busy. Um, you come in, you do your thing, and you get kicked out. Um, <laughs> don't, don't expect that there will be too much support. So it's very, very difficult for us. 
It is that, for example, we uh, accumulate all kinds of messages sent to us and just have a document of 90 pages now, which is full of metrics and, and statements. So we let basically quantity speak for itself. And you've seen some of the measures like, for example, yeah, uh, things used on in 15 countries on six continents. These things speak for themselves. Wherever we can do uh, a better service, of course, we try to do that. But it's an enormous additional effort, which needs enormous expertise. And you very uh, rarely will get real support for this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much.